when experts or analysts say th certain things about players as to how, at their level, it comes from a culmination of play you've analyzed and seen that then stacks up. So it's a summation of good and bad plays. And sometimes it can be very intransparent to fans as to why people believe uh, certain players are very good or very bad. And certainly in Overwatch, because it's so much random and a lot of complex stuff happening at the same time, I think there's value in breaking out these specific small instances where, for instance, a very good player shines and as to substantiate, for instance, a comment, which I also stand behind, and also in the run-up to this game, uh, Monty said, is that Fissure is a top three tank in the league. Now, this is possibly a controversial statement on the surface, because he didn't play much, right? Like, Gesture was always brought out in front of him, even in the 14-map series on the last day of stage one, where they played the playoffs, Fisher didn't end up playing a single map. So how is it possible that a top three tank player ends up not playing uh, that much? I think he has like half an hour of playtime in stage one. So how is that possible? Why do we think he's still a top three player? So one aspect is definitely the historical one, but also it definitely gets proven right when plays like the following I'm going to show you happen. Because if a sign of a very good player is that he exploits the smallest margins of individual mis misplays. And yes, some of these misplays here will be a little bit bigger than small, but the way, sort of like on Razor's Edge, how Fissure is able to punish you, almost doesn't punish you, but then finally gets to do it, is an art form in itself. And therefore, also a player like Fissure will allow you to play against these and win against these lesser teams that naturally make more of these mistakes and will naturally punish more. And just by virtue of his excellence, will you be able to win these series. So I have two examples for you. And the first one is here with Baby Bay. He's up here on Hanabora point B, pretty typical position for a soldier to be. He also, if we keep this clip rolling, basically heard Fissure, or at least expect someone to be there. Not sure if he actually heard him. But he looks there, and what will happen in a second, he will go here, and he will go into a little battle between him and Shofu. Baby Bay at this point is the last hope of his team. Big Goose, before this fight ends, will have built up an ultimate, not surprisingly, because this is a a triple tank comp and you as a main healer built up ultimate very quickly in those and so baby bay needs to have impact with this ultimate here right against five basically five or against two ultimates arguably by that time so baby bay needs a big play here so knowing that that he needs a big play he tries to sort of go into Shofar, see maybe if he can get a lucky pick. Sees, no, this is way too many people, but drops a significant amount. Fortunately, doesn't catch the Helix rocket and makes it out, right? Here's where the small misplay happens. There's two plays that Baby Bay could have gone for here. One is to get the Mega that's about located here, right? The second one is to use his Biotic Nade. A biotic, uh, it's not biotic nade, it's um, you, the healing zone. And I know why he doesn't, because he still fears Winston, and you want your biotic field for that situation when um, Winston comes onto you so you can win the duel. He also has Navix to back him up here, so what he should be doing is topping himself up. He doesn't. It's not. A, a crazy big mistake, but it ends up basically costing them the point, even though, yes, granted, they should have probably lost it just based on economy. This is a, I would say, statistically, this is a, in this situation, like a 65% chance that Gladiators wins it, in comparison how many ultimates they have, what ultimates they have, and what situation the point is in because you need to win way harder on 2CP maps, right? 
Okay, not to go off on a tangent, he's on 74 HP here, and Fissure, maybe this has been communicated to him, maybe not. In all possible cases, he, if he doesn't sense, and I think the, maybe the communication is there in order to say that maybe someone told him soldier is low, but he makes the play, he goes into these two people. Shouldn't have much of a chance, right? Like his goal should be to occupy the time and resources of these players in order for his team to make a play on the top rung, right? If a small mistake like baby base happens to you, he's not just distracting you, a player of the caliber of Fissure, he will exploit you. So what's happening here is, here's the perfect jump onto you, and what he does is, I think what Winston can do, and I can't really show it here, but he jumps, and then you have a little jump after, if you hold jump, that you do a little mini jump that gives you more momentum, so you are faster for a little bit, and then allows him to do basically exactly 75 HP. He could have probably done about 80 uh, in total, because Soldier out sprints um, Winston's in most cases, right? So... Baby Bay keeps sprinting for his life, and he needs to... This is the player that should make an impact. Fissure takes him out, right? Small little bliss play. P possibly, people could argue this is a medium-sized misplay, but not healing up. Upon seeing Fissure, maybe he should have uh, had his biotic field already up. But what also ends up happening is that Navix tries to overcompensate for this mistake. So Fissure has his ultimate up. And he just saw Nevix use his booster, right? So upon completion of the booster, Nevix has a five second cooldown until he dies. So let's count here. So his booster is done now, right? This is the moment his booster is done. Fissure is fairly low here. So what he does is he will use ultimate in a second. So let's count. And keep track of this here. What? Because, okay, let's, let me explain what happens. He surgically almost knows what the booster cooldown is and he will throw Nevix off the cliff. He not only will not die in this situation and keep Nevix for the occupied, he will actually kill him. Because Nevix made the small mistake, he probably would have contributed more by either not going in too hard because he should, by all accounts, if his team's ultimate tracking is solid, should know that Fissure has an ultimate up. He hasn't used it in a, uh, in a while, right? So, what he will do here is... Okay, so we haven't counted, sorry. Um, I'm going back. Let's just watch this play again. Jump. Small mini jump. Onto rim. Blam. Okay, so... Booster off, one, two, three, four, dead. Four seconds. That's like, possibly like a second to a half second till Nevix can boost himself out of that situation again and pro probably be safe. Yes, he might have to, actually, no, I, I think he would, would have probably made it out. I don't think he was beaten up too badly by Fissure there. If we're looking at this again. Look at Nevix's HP, he's still very healthy. You can't beat him up this quickly. He definitely makes it onto the point. So again, Fissure exploits the smallest mistakes by the smallest possible margins. While he could have done 80 damage to Baby Bay, Baby Bay had exactly 74 HP. Why do I say 80? Um, because I think Baby Bay would have outsprinted it at some point and the damage would have been gone, right? So he kills him narrowly, then sees Nevix do the little mistake, not only does not die, but also by the smallest possible margins throws Nevix off the cliff. So this play alone wins them the point. They continue uh, taking it here. Obviously they have a huge ult advantage. Fissure also sort of steals the kill that's coming in soon, where after this, Hydration gets a hook onto Doc. Doc could have probably danced around this pillar, it's all fine, right? So, but it, it doesn't stop there because now we are on attack, right? So, let me go to that specific instance where, okay, um, what happens here is the following. 
Baby Bay has been seen in this choke. So he's down here. The only way for him to get up is use his grapple hook. His grapple hook has a specific cooldown. Fissure knows this. Fissure, but to be fair, also Bisho, call for a dive on Baby Bay. We will see this in a second. Fissure will soon see that he's up there. Look at this. Fissure sees him. By this time, he still has five seconds left. Now look at the committal on this dive. This is not a cleanup situation. Keep, it, keep this in mind. Yes, they're a little bit lower uh, than Gladiators, but this is by all means still a 6v6. So what Fissure does seems reckless on the surface, but with his just inner knowledge and tracking of these basic abilities, he will be able to kill Baby Bay here. So look at this. Fissure commits. Boom, he's there. And as the grapple hook comes off Kula, Baby Bay's at 13 XP, uh, uh, HP, Fissure at this point, because he had already used his jump, would have not been able to finish him off easily here. Unless he gets it... So if Baby Bay gets up here, he's probably safe. But Fissure knows. He knows, man. He knows exactly what the cooldown has to be. And yes, there's some inaccuracy because he didn't immediately see. Maybe he heard him. But he goes for the committal and kills Baby Bay here. You can't make these mistakes by the smallest margins. But what Baby Bay should have done here is either dropped back into his team and try to get a heal, or really not maybe grappled up there knowing that fissure is happening. So also what San Francisco in general could have done is to support Baby Bay better in order to survive that. And well, you will say now he's on this side, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's like he just they just keep on killing, right? It's, it's not like they get to punish Fisher. Fisher knows exactly how far he can go and knows ex exactly when you went too far. I hope this sort of explains why a lot of Overwatch League experts have been saying that Fisher is a top three tank. And this is one of these instances. And I hope to build up sort of a catalog of plays by of players in order to substantiate these claims. Thanks for watching.